Planet was founded about 10 years ago by three former NASA scientists with the lofty goal of using space to help life on Earth. What we've done since then is pioneered the use of very small CubeSats to put up a fleet of uh, satellites that scan the planet on a daily basis. So we've got about 10 years of data of like daily images of, of all the land masses on Earth. What we're doing with that data is helping with agriculture, forestry, disaster response. We can help farmers determine levels of moisture within their fields. We can help governments with stopping illegal deforestation. As cloud engineering manager, I run our cloud environments. Um, what we do is we provide the ability for our product teams to uh, develop within those environments as smoothly and easily as possible. Ultimately, my job would be uh, best described as, as getting the cloud out of everybody's way and let them innovate. Our main reason for leveraging the cloud is flexibility and scalability. We need the flexibility to be agile, to bring new products to market as, as fast as possible. And we need scalability because we're processing massive amounts of data and we're also storing massive amounts of data, right? So we need something that can scale up with the amount of data we have, 10 plus years of daily images of the entire Earth, and then process all of that data when necessary. The primary usage of AWS has been driving our mission systems. We use uh, AWS GovCloud to be able to uh, actually run and task our satellite. So satellite communication, telling the satellites where to go, all of the monitoring of the satellites, updating of the satellite software, all of that goes through AWS. Being in GovCloud allows us to meet our ITAR and EAR requirements. It's really the, the best game in town for that. The key thing that we really gain from it is just the ability to burst up and process all of those images and then scale back down when they're you know done scaling so that we're not paying for constant compute use when we're not processing. We consistently exceed 300,000 uh, reads per second when accessing data on S3. And that's just something that we wouldn't be able to do outside of uh, the cloud. It just wouldn't work. One of the really cool things that we're looking at uh, in the future is using AI to be able to look at uh, our images and make predictions based on those things, right? So we've already started kind of pioneering that a little bit. We have AI detection with, you know, for like roads and stuff like that. And we just want to expand on that, right? We, we just recently launched a new satellite, the Tanager satellite. Uh, that's a partnership with Carbon Mapper uh, and uh, NASA. That's the first satellite that's actually uh, able to uh, see the wavelengths for uh, carbon buildup within the environment. We can now really bring kind of like unparalleled detail and um, insights to our customers with Carbon Mapper. They can they can look and say, here's a polluter, or here is a factory that's currently uh, kicking out tons of carbon out into the environment, and we can work with various different countries to uh, you know rectify those problems. I think the key thing is is to start small, start with what you know. Um, Try to use best practices from the beginning, but don't get too uptight about it. It's much more difficult to add infrastructure as code later. If you start with it, you have a self-documented process. You have all of the controls in place from a permissions perspective, basically built in. The alternative is, and, and this is the trap that a lot of people fall into, is, is if you just make it a big wild west, then at some point you're gonna have to come in and wrangle it, and that's, one of the biggest problems that you can have.